Welcome to Microsoft Excel 2010 Step-by-Step. Step. In this first section, we are going to learn how to set up a workbook. In this first movie, we'll create a workbook. We already have the exception summary underscore start workbook open. To close that, we can click the File tab, and then in Backstage View, click Close. Now that the workbook's closed, we can create a new workbook. To do that, we click the File tab, and then in Backstage View, click New. Now on the Available Templates page of Backstage View, click Blank Workbook, and then click Create. Now that the workbook is open, we've created a new blank workbook, we can save it. To do that, we'll click the File tab, and click Save As. We make sure that we're in the directory that we want, in this case, Chapter 1. And then in the file name field, type Exceptions 2010. And click the Save button. Now that we've saved the file, we can add properties. To do that, we click the File tab. If necessary, click Info. It's already selected here. Click Properties and then click Show Document Panel. When we do, the Properties Document Panel appears within the Excel Program window. Now in the Keywords field, we can type words that identify the file. In this case, they will be Exceptions, comma, Regional, comma, and Percentage. Then in the Category field, we type performance. Now we can add advanced properties. To do that, we click the arrow at the right end of the document properties button and click advanced properties to display the advanced properties dialog box. In that dialog box, we click the custom tab and then in the name field, type performance verify that we have the type we want. In this case, we do want it to be a text value. And then in the value field, type exceptions. When we click the Add button, Excel creates the property, performance, with the value and type that we specified. Now we can close the dialog box by clicking OK, and save our work by clicking the Save button on the Quick Access toolbar. In this segment, we created the new workbook and added properties to it. In the next segment, we'll modify a workbook. In the previous segment of the course, we created workbooks. In this segment, we will modify workbooks. For this exercise, we will use the exception tracking underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name of exception tracking. On the tab bar, click the insert worksheet button. A new worksheet appears in the workbook. Now right click the new worksheets sheet tab and then click rename. When we do, Excel highlights the new worksheet's name. Type 2010 and then press Enter. Doing so renames the worksheet to 2010. Now on the tab bar, double click the Sheet 1 sheet tab. Excel highlights the name of the worksheet. Now type 2009 and press Enter. This renames the worksheet to 2009. Now we right click the 2009 sheet tab, point to tab color in the shortcut menu that appears, and then in the standard colors area of the color palette, click the green square. Excel changes the 2009 sheet tab to green. Now on the tab bar, drag the 2010 sheet tab to the left of the scratch pad sheet tab. 
Now right click the 2010 sheet tab and then from the shortcut menu that appears click hide. Excel hides the 2010 worksheet. Now right click the 2009 sheet tab and then click move or copy. Doing so displays the move or copy dialog box. Click the two book arrow and then from the list that appears click new book. Select the create a copy checkbox and then click the OK button. When you do, Excel creates a new workbook that contains only the worksheet you copied over to it. On the quick access toolbar, click the save button and then in the file name area type the name 2009 archive and then press enter. When you do, Excel saves the workbook under the name of 2009 archive. Now on the view tab, in the window group, click the switch windows button and then click exception tracking. This displays the exception tracking workbook. Now on the tab bar, right click the scratch pad sheet tab and then click delete. When you do, Excel displays a confirmation dialog box asking if you're sure you want to delete the worksheet. We are, so we can click the delete button and Excel deletes the worksheet from your workbook. Now right click the 2009 sheet tab and then click unhide. In the Unhide dialog box, make sure that the 2010 worksheet is selected and click OK. When you do, Excel restores the 2010 worksheet to the workbook. In this segment, we modified workbooks. In the next segment, we will modify worksheets. In the previous segment, we modified workbooks. In this segment, we will modify worksheets. For this exercise, we will use the route volume underscore start workbook. I have already opened that workbook and saved it under the new name of route volume. To begin, on the May 12 worksheet, select cell A1. Then, on the Home tab, in the cells group, click the insert arrow and then click insert sheet columns. A new column A appears and the contents of the worksheet move over one column. Now on the insert list, click insert sheet rows. A new row one appears and the contents of the worksheet move down one row. Now click the Insert Options button that appears below the lower right corner of the selected cell, which is cell A1, and then click Clear Formatting. Excel removes the formatting from the new row 1 that was applied when you created it. Now right click the column header of column E and then click Hide. Column E disappears. Now on the tab bar, click the May 13 sheet tab. The worksheet named May 13 appears. Click cell B6 and then on the home tab in the cells group, click the delete arrow and then in the list that appears, click delete cells. the delete dialog box opens. If necessary, select the shift cells up option and then click OK. The delete dialog box closes and Excel deletes cell B6, moving the cells below it up to fill the gap. Now click cell C6 
and then in the cells group, in the insert list, click insert cells. The insert dialog box appears. If necessary, select the shift cells down option and then click OK. Excel inserts a cell and moves the cells below C6 down one row to accommodate the new cell in the workbook. Now in cell C6, type 4499 and press enter. Now select cells E13 to F13, point to the border of the selected cells, when your mouse pointer changes to a four-pointed arrow, drag the selected cells to cells B13 and C13. The dragged cells replace the values in cells B13 and C13. In this segment, we modified worksheets. In the next segment, we will customize the Excel 2010 program window. In this section of the course, we are talking about setting up workbooks. In the last segment, we modified worksheets. Now, in this segment, we'll customize the Excel 2010 program window. To set up, I opened the package counts underscore start and misrouted packages underscore start workbooks and saved them as misrouted packages and package counts. Now, with the misrouted packages workbook displayed, we can begin. In the lower right hand corner of the Excel 2010 window, click the zoom in control five times. Doing so changes the worksheet zoom level to 150%. Now, select cells B2 through C11 and then on the View tab, in the Zoom group, click Zoom to Selection. Now on the View tab, in the Zoom group, click the Zoom button. When you do, the Zoom dialog box opens. Now we can click 100%, this Option button, click OK, and Excel returns the Zoom level to its default. Now, on the View tab, in the Window group, click the Switch Windows button, and then click Package Counts. Now on the View tab, in the Window group, click the Arrange All button. That displays the Arrange Windows dialog box. Now click the Cascade Option button, and click OK. When you do, Excel cascades the open workbook windows within the program window. Now we click the file tab and click options. Doing so displays the Excel options dialog box. Now we can click quick access toolbar to display the customize the quick access toolbar page. Now click the choose commands from arrow and then in the list click Review tab. Now click the spelling command and click Add. When we do, Excel adds the spelling command to the Quick Access Toolbar. Now we click Customize Ribbon and display the Customize the Ribbon page of the Excel Options dialog box. If necessary, click the Customize the Ribbon Boxes arrow and click Main Tabs. Then in the right tab list, click the Review tab and then click the Move Up button three times. Excel moves the Review tab between the Insert and Page Layout tabs. Now we click the New Tab button 
A tab named New Tab, Custom, appears below the most recently active tab in the main tabs list. Now, we click the New Tab, Custom tab name, click the Rename button, and we type My Commands. In the Display Name box, click OK, and Excel changes our new tab's name to My Commands. Now we click the New Group Custom group, click Rename, and then in the Display Name box, type Formatting, and click OK. When we do, Excel changes the name of the new group to Formatting. In the right-hand tab list, click the My Commands tab name. Then, on the left side of the dialog box, click the Choose Commands From Boxes arrow and click Main Tabs. In the left tab list, click the Home Tabs Expand Control, click the Styles Group's name, and then click the Add button. The Styles Group is added to the My Commands tab. In the left tab list, under the Home tab, click the Number Group's Expand Control. The commands in the number group appear within the list. In the right tab list, click the formatting group you created earlier. Then, in the left tab list, click the number format item and click the Add button. Excel 2010 adds the number format item to the formatting custom group. Click OK to save your ribbon customizations and then click the My Commands tab on the ribbon to display those commands. In this section of the course, we set up a workbook. In this segment, we customize the Excel 2010 program window. In the next section of the course, we will start working with data and Excel tables.